Hi, I'm Kier Overton. I am the Communications Director here at Dundas Valley School of Art and I am back with our painting instructor Susan Outlaw. And Susan, you're an oil painter, you teach oil painting. One of the great arts of the art of oil painting is mixing colors. Yes, yes. I know a lot of our students wonder about how do you get the colors that you want. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that and show some of the process you use. Okay, yeah, my pleasure. Um, I think it's so important to remember the basics to art. So you've got the color wheel here, um, the primaries and the secondaries. It's really, really important to know how these paints work together. So um, often students will take the paint right out of the right, right out of the tube, and it will be a little too concentrated. So I'm really trying to get my students to neutralize the color a little bit more. So to neutralize color, you're looking at um, if you find that your red is a little bit too bright, you want to neutralize it with a complement, which would be green. So in, um, I've used a little bit of sap green here. I typically use Winsor Newton oils, but I have a box full of other brands too. So I'm not really partial to one or the other. I've just started with Winsor Newton. Um, so the green is just, such a gorgeous green but it is too bright the chroma is is very very high so what I usually recommend to my students is to neutralize it with the complement so as you can see this green is starting to get a little deeper and what I'm going to do is add a little bit of the flesh tint to this mix and see what happens as well since it is the complement this is really grayed out your green quite a bit perhaps a little too much so I'll go back in and add a little bit more green into this puddle. And, uh, and now I've got a, a green that is sitting a lot more neutral and it's quite lovely and, and not as, as vibrant. So neutralizing your color is very, very important, especially if you're painting uh, realistically. It's also important to remember that color matching is very tricky because often you will have many different things going on in your painting and one green may be next to another green, so you've got to get those different values and shades right. Uh, what I suggest to my students is take a little bit of canvas paper, punch out some holes, and try to color match, especially if you're working from, uh, from a photograph. You can add your color here and then, and then match it up against the color that you're trying to, to get. So this this, this works really well for beginners and um, I highly recommend it. So when you're looking at the complements of blue and orange, you have to be careful not to um, use certain blue and orange mixtures together because this will sometimes bring in a lot of green and you don't want that. So when you are neutralizing an orange, I often do recommend to my students to use a bit of brown instead of blue. Uh, it's probably the only complementary color uh, color pair that is a bit funny working together. Um, I also wanted to introduce oleo gel, which is a fantastic medium. A lot of people will use uh, wallet oil or linseed oil or there's many, many different mediums, but I do prefer this oleo gel. It's, um, I put it in a little container so that I don't have the whole, the whole container with me but it's a thixotropic medium, so it looks like a gel. It almost could be perceived as a, a body building for oil paint, but that's not the case. It, what it does when you uh, apply it with paint, it uh, mixes very, very smooth, and there's no body that comes of it at all. It's quite flat, but it's, it's quite nice because when you put it on your palette, it doesn't run into all the other colors, and it also dries with a really beautiful satin finish. And often when you're painting with walnut oil, um, it, will, it will give you a kind of, um, you'll have these dry areas and these very shiny areas in, on your canvas. Nothing that a varnish can't fix, but I prefer to see my work kind of uniform as I go along. And then when I varnish, it's, it's quite lovely because it, it seems to um, sit on the surface really, really nicely. So I would recommend this Thixotropic medium. Uh, don't forget, it doesn't add body to your oil. All it does is, is give you the, the medium that you need and, um, and it helps you to control it a lot better. So any other questions about mixing oils? Cure. 
<laughs> no, that's at this point. Did you want to show okay. us an, a different other color that you were working on, maybe? Or is it well, I have I have a lot of colors here on my palette that I've been working with for my seascape. I think it's just really important to remember when you are trying to mix color to um, think about the temperature. So if you're working with cool colors, sometimes a blue can take on a very warm temperature. So you have to um, really adjust that. I like to mix chroma with chroma. If you're, if you're mixing color with black and white, it kind of changes. So white will tint your color and black will shade your color. But if you add black, say, to this blue mixture, it, it goes a little bit dull. So I prefer to take um, my blue mixture and add chroma to that blue mixture to enhance the color if I want it to be brighter or deeper. Or I will take some Payne's Gray or Indigo. Indigo is one of my favorite blue colors because it's, it's a very, very dark blue. So I will, I will make this blue puddle a lot darker using, using the Indigo. And then you get a gorgeous blue without it looking really, really dark. Even, even if I take a bit of this new blue over and mix it with that black, it's still quite a, a, a dark, flat blue. It doesn't have as much quality to it. Same with white. I think white is, is one of those um, paints that people overuse. And when you decide, oh, I want a color to be lighter, so I'm going to take a little bit of this blue and mix it in with the white, what happens is right away it gets very chalky looking. It's very pastel-y. And that's not often what, what you want to happen. So again, instead of mixing it with white right away, I will try different color combinations, whether it's a pale yellow, um, which you have to be careful with that because it can turn it green, which you can see here. So again, if, if you wanted it to be more on the green side, that will work really, really well. But sometimes it's nice to try a flesh tint and mix that in, and it, it starts to deepen the level of that blue. And I'll take a little bit of this brown mixture I made and add that too, and it gets a lot deeper than the original color, as you can see here. So I think chroma with chroma is a better way to lighten and darken. Not saying that I would never use black or white. I would use a ton of white, but I usually try to mix it until I get the right um, the right color before I tint it out. Black I rarely use. Uh, I know a lot of instructors will say never use black. I, I think that's a rule that can be thrown out. You can definitely use black, but just bring color into it. Otherwise it will sit extremely flat. Uh, the same with when you're painting the foam in waves. Um, you don't want to just use straight white. It will be flat. You need the color to, to help with the volume and, and just give it some shape. A little peek into side, inside your mind and how you work when you're doing your painting and some of the great stuff that you share with your students. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. I, I hope it works. Right. <laughs> Go give that a try. Yeah.